Hello friends, Miss Natalie here. Today I wanted to show you how to use the gradient tool in Krita and other gradient options in order to quickly create a range of values in your artwork. Um, let's see, first we're going to um, look at the gradient option here at the top of our screen. Uh, if we click on it, we can see that there are lots of different preset gradients here, different colors, different uh, concepts, and the one that's usually default is from foreground color to transparent, which is, you know, okay, but if we want to create a range of values, um, what we really want is the foreground to background. Um, <clears throat> so we can click on that, and then we'll see over here, this shows our foreground color and our background color. So now it would be a range from black to white. Um, so if we just went ahead and did something like that, you can see we go from black to white. Oh, I forgot. We got to choose on our tool options. I've got it as a radial. There are different um, ways that you can create that gradient. You can have a linear gradient, which is just in a line from black to white. You can have that radial, which I said, which is kind of, it'll go in a circle, sort of from, from one place where you click to another. Uh, and then there's some other ones. There's the square. There is the conical, sort of makes something like that. There is the spiral. There, there's a lot of options. Um, the one that I, the ones that I use the most are the linear and the radial. So we're going to just start with a linear today. And you know, black and white is fine, but it's a little boring. So we're going to choose our foreground and background color just by clicking on this here and um, I'm going to go with a range of reds so my foreground is going to be a very light red I'm going to choose kind of a, a pinky red right here okay and I'm going to click on the background and I'm going to choose like a really dark red there and that way when I use my gradient I will get oh look from the pink to the dark and all those ranges in between. Cool. All right, so that's my background. And if I if I click on in a paint uh, layer, and, and gradient is a paint tool, I'll get a, a nifty background. But what if I want a shape? Well, um, I've found that works for me in Krita is using the selection tools. You can do a rectangular selection, you can do an elliptical selection, you can do a polygon selection, you can do a freehand selection. So let's just, let's start with a circle. Let's do a couple of selections. Well, we'll do a circle. Okay, and then if I use my gradient tool, let's make it radial, inside my selection, you will see, hey, I've come up with a really not bad sphere here. Um, it just does the gradient inside the selection. So let's try a, let's try a triangle. All right. And go over to the gradient tool. I'm going to do a linear one this time. Go straight down our triangle, and look, we've got a selection. Um, and if I want to make a weird blobby thing, I can do that. Go over to gradient. Let's make that uh, radial also. We'll have it coming that way. And bam, I've got a range of values within my blob. I'd say it's most effective on uh, regular geometric forms like the, the triangle and 
the 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 sphere really I made a sphere here but you can do it as I said using any of these selection tools which I've now uh, shown you and they work just like the shape tools so you know with the rectangle and the sphere or the elliptical sorry you just click and drag with the polygon you click for every point of your polygon and the uh, freehand works like the freehand brush where you hold it and you draw freehand selection so if you know how to use those tools you can use the selections all right and if we then want to maybe have a cool background we can add another layer make sure that this layer with our shapes is in the front come on layer Nah, thank you. And then we can use, oh, we can make sure we are unselected uh, by, let's see, there's two ways. You can go over here and select and say um, deselect, or you can hit Control, Shift, and A all at the same time. All right, and we're going to do our layer, make sure we're on layer two, and then we can put in a background. Bam, and that's kind of cool, huh? I think that's nifty. I've got value, I've got, and you know what? This would actually uh, meet the requirements for the assignment. It's a little boring. Uh, I'm not gonna give this particular thing an A+, but it's really cool. It would definitely get an A because it definitely meets all the requirements. That is for sure. All right, now let's get into vector layers. Yes, if you uh, want to do something a little different, you can use a vector layer. So I am going to actually just remove this layer by cl right clicking and then click remove layer. And then we're going to control alt A. Wait, no, control shift A. Yeah, control shift A to get rid of that selection. And we are going to add a vector layer. All right. Now um, we're going to create a, a shape. Let's, let's create a rectangle here. And then we're going to turn this rectangle into a box. I'm going to use the poly, actually, I'm going to use the poly shape tool. Yeah, that, well, you know what? I can use polyline the same way I would use poly shape. Uh, and there we go. And there's one side. I will officially use poly shape of the box. And the other side of the box. And it's not a perfect box because I'm doing it quick, but it's a pretty good box. All right. Now um, I can select this square right here. And I have different options. Remember how we could fill in our, our shape? Well, one of our fill options is with a gradient. So you can do a gradient fill. Hey, there's the gradient fill. And um, it doesn't use the gradient to tool colors. You do have to choose them yourself, but I can, I can choose. Okay, so choose that one and choose the color there. And maybe I, I do want that as my color for one side. And then I click over here and I choose the color there. And I wonder if I can go up here. Yes, I can. And choose that color there for the other side. Oh, yes. Wait, why is it not taking that? Oh, because my opacity is at zero. Silly. Got to check out that opacity. There we go. Opacity at uh, 100. Lovely. And now I have a gradient inside the box. Well, you've got this great this outline, though. That's not great. I can also make my line a gradient. <sighs> is annoying though, I do have to choose the colors again. From that to 
to that. And the little eyedropper tool is great because it lets you just grab what any color that is in the area. And there we go. And now my uh, my line is the same as my my inner part. And now I have a range on my box, and I can do the same thing with the other uh, the other ones. And they're already there, which is nice. And then I can choose this at the top. And for my line, and I've got a box. It, it, I have to say, it doesn't follow what the light source would actually be, but it has a range of value on the box, and it looks three-dimensional. Um, yeah, it, 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 as I said, it, it's, it, it doesn't fit the actual light source. It fits some kind of weird light source. Now, one thing that I like to do um, is I can add this. If I added this line right here, oh, that's add this line right there, and then make it, oh, I got to select it. Got to use the selection tool in order to um, add that. And now it's got a range and it looks like the box is open and it's the inside. And I think that's cool. So anyway, that's how you use the gradient tool in a paint layer and how you can use the gradient options in a vector layer. So go out, have some fun, add a range of value to your work and make some art.